It's certainly important to note that the climate is changing at an accelerated pace and causing negative impacts for both humans and ecosystems. The latest scientific reports from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, state that the causal relationship between human activities and temperature changes is unequivocally linked. Atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations have increased more than 49% since the pre-industrial period. Over the past 60 years, CO2 levels have increased 100 times faster than ever recorded, even including the end of the last ice age. The blanketing effect of higher CO2 concentrations in the Earth's atmosphere is already causing temperature changes. According to the IPCC, the past decade was 1.1 degrees Celsius warmer than the pre-industrial era. And according to a more recent analysis by NASA, the Earth's average surface temperature in 2022 was the fifth warmest on record, while the past nine years have been the warmest since record keeping first began in 1880. Notably, the global consensus is that we need to limit warming to 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius to avoid the worst impacts. At over 1.1 degrees Celsius warming, we're already seeing impacts with more frequent extreme weather events and the melting of glaciers resulting in rising sea levels. Looking forward, even a 2 degrees Celsius increase could have even more drastic impacts. For example, extreme heat events could occur 5.6 to 13.9 times more often. Extreme droughts could occur 2.4 times more often, further stressing food and water security. On our current path, warming could increase by 3 degrees Celsius by 2100, which is well above the 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius targets. The good news is that many experts feel that we can turn things around by continuing to invest in and accelerate the adoption of the technologies that can help us achieve rapid and deep decarbonization across all industries. The renewable energy transition is well underway. We forecast global non-hydropower renewables electricity generation, including wind power, solar power, geothermal power, and biomass-fired power, could increase more than threefold between 2022 and 2032. As a result, non-hydro renewables are forecast to account for nearly one-third of total electricity generation globally in 2032, up from a much smaller 13% share in 2021. Wind and solar power are in particular are becoming the technologies of choice for power project developers, governments, and corporations. Combined, we forecast that they may account for nearly 88% of global forecasted net electricity capacity additions over the next 10 years across all power sources, such as coal, natural gas, nuclear, and renewables. There are four main drivers that support the robust growth outlook for renewable energy. First, there are increasingly supportive policy environments around the world. Over 135 countries have economy-wide net zero emissions targets, with nearly all aiming for 2050 or earlier. To incentivize renewable energy adoption, many countries use subsidies, feed-in tariffs, and renewables auctions and project tenders. For example, in 2022, the enactment of the Inflation Reduction Act in the United States created significant tailwinds for renewable energy growth as it extends and expands tax credits that can be used towards the construction of new renewable energy systems. Second, corporations are increasingly seeking their own renewable energy supply to meet sustainability targets. Top corporate clean energy buyers include Amazon, Microsoft, and Meta. Third, renewable energy systems are often cost competitive with traditional power sources such as coal and natural gas. Onshore wind and solar photovoltaic power costs declined 68% and 88% respectively between 2010 and 2021. While supply chain challenges increased wind and solar power prices over the past year, both have remained highly cost competitive given often even steeper cost increases to natural gas. Finally, advancements in wind and solar power technologies such as solar modules and wind turbines are expanding the suitability range and performance of systems and further cutting costs. Wind and solar power projects cannot provide steady baseload power as wind speeds and solar irradiance levels are variable depending on the time of day and weather conditions. This means that they are intermittent power sources, which can create challenges for electricity grids. Most notably, peak demand often does not align with the peak generation profile for wind and solar power systems. In our view, the widespread adoption of energy storage systems is key to overcoming this problem and reaching high levels of renewable energy. 
Both short and long duration energy storage can help fill in these daily and seasonal differences between intermittent renewables generation and peak demand. A short duration energy storage system is one that can discharge energy for up to 10 hours at its rated power output. Globally, energy storage is forecast to explode from 34 gigawatt hours in 2020 to 1,028 gigawatt hours in 2030. It is expected that short duration lithium ion battery energy systems will continue to dominate the market and account for most of the growth through at least 2030. These systems, which typically have a storage duration of four to six hours, are the current technology of choice due to their established supply chain and cost benefits. That said, long duration energy storage systems are also gaining momentum as they can offer stable energy output ranging from 10 hours to days, weeks, and even seasons. While long duration systems have traditionally been limited due to cost, permitting, technological, and policy barriers, significant growth opportunities are emerging. To reach global net zero power sector targets, long duration storage must be scaled up by an estimated 400 times from present day levels by 2040. This increase equates to a $1.5 to $3 trillion investment opportunity. Pumped hydropower systems are the main long duration storage technology, but compressed air energy storage, liquid air energy storage, non-lithium ion batteries, and hydrogen-based storage systems may be poised to gain traction. Overall investments into energy storage are rapidly increasing as their vital role in the clean energy transition becomes apparent. As such, energy storage investments were set to double in 2022, and we expect continued growth looking forward. Definitely. In comparison to gasoline, hydrogen gas is three times as energy dense and can provide energy with low or no direct emissions via the use of blue and green hydrogen. Therefore, hydrogen can be used to decarbonize hard to electrify sectors such as petrochemical refining, aviation, and shipping. This includes, one, its use as a fuel for transport, power plants, and energy storage systems. Two, its use in heating systems for industry and residential and commercial buildings. And three, its use as a feedstock for the production of chemicals and products such as fertilizer, steel, and plastics. While nearly all of today's hydrogen supply comes from carbon-intensive gray hydrogen, the future of hydrogen is increasingly sustainable. The low carbon hydrogen project pipeline is quickly expanding in many countries with over 300 large scale projects in the works. Green hydrogen projects account for 95% of the low carbon project pipeline, although there are several notable blue hydrogen projects as well. Green hydrogen is produced through the use of electrolyzers powered by renewable energy, while blue hydrogen is produced using a process that includes methane or coal with carbon capture technology. Given the widespread applications for hydrogen, hydrogen demand is forecasted to more than double between 2020 and 2030. By 2030, green and blue hydrogen need to account for two-thirds of hydrogen production to stay on track towards reaching global net zero targets by 2050. A key barrier to the growth of green hydrogen is that it generally costs more than gray hydrogen. However, Green hydrogen prices are expected to decline as green hydrogen projects and electrolyzer technologies scale globally. Widespread cost parity is projected to occur in the 2030s, although cost parity could come sooner than projected in countries with the cheapest renewable energy prices, such as Chile, or highly favorable policies, such as the US. The Inflation Reduction Act's Clean Hydrogen Production Tax Credit could lead green and blue hydrogen to become cost competitive in the United States. Innovations in ag tech, such as precision agriculture and controlled environment agriculture systems, can bolster the sustainability, efficiency, and yields of agricultural environments. In more urban settings, green buildings can provide significant benefits to building occupants and local communities while reducing greenhouse gas emissions in the building and construction sectors. Along with renewable energy, energy storage, and hydrogen systems, these technologies could see trillions in investments through 2050 as governments and corporations work to address climate change. <laughs>